Okay, I want to do a bunch of videos where we start taking a deeper look at the techniques out of boxing. And my hope for these videos is that, is that it gets us to start thinking more while we're in the ring. Look, boxing is 90% a mental game, and I think that we oftentimes prioritize training the physical part of that game and neglect the mental training side of that game. Um, we need to have an awareness when we go into the ring. We need to be making good observations about what's happening. What are the dangers that we're seeing out there? What are the opportunities or the tendencies of our opponent? Correctly interpreting those observations and then making adjustments to improve our game where that's needed. Asking the right questions of ourselves, So that if we're training on our own, if we're our own coach and we need to self-evaluate, we're able to do that. If we're mid-round in a fight and we're not able to consult with our corner, we're able to make the correct interpretations and the correct adjustments in order to improve our game and our chances in that fight. So the first thing that we need to do is discuss and develop a critical skill. Uh, and it's a skill that I really don't see anybody talking about. I certainly don't see anybody um, discussing on how to implement it successfully within your training program. And that is the skill of clear, consistent, purposeful visualization during all of our non-sparring training inside of the gym. So first let's level set on what we mean by visualization. Let's define it. So. It's just imagining, like it sounds, that there's a fighter right across from us fighting us. Somebody that's throwing punches at us that we're taking care of. Somebody that we're punching that they're taking care of. How are they responding to those punches? We're moving with them. How are they responding to our movements? How are they initiating their own punches and then responding when we take care of it? So fleshing out this full picture of a fighter. This isn't just I'm jabbing a guy in the head, I'm jabbing a guy in the stomach, I'm catching a jab, I'm catching a right hand. This is, I'm jabbing that guy. What's he doing? Does he catch it? Is he in a good position? Good. I did my job, he did his job. Is he slipping that punch? Where is he now? What are my dangers? What are my opportunities? Is he firing a counter punch over top of that jab? Am I ready to take care of that? Is he moving back? And what is my response to that? And so, how is he responding to our movements? How are we responding to his movements? All right, so visualization, it's an important skill for all sports, but especially for combat sports. So why is that? Well, it's low attrition. Look, I can refine my techniques as much as I want through visualization. I can do it five hours a day if I want to. You can't do that with sparring. And that is if you have access to sparring. Sometimes you don't even have access to regular good sparring. You could be a pro fighter in a big city and not have regular access to good sparring. What do we mean by good sparring? Well, somebody that has a high enough technical ability that they're going to challenge us technically. Somebody that has a high enough level of conditioning that they're going to be able to give us rounds, that they're going to push our conditioning. Somebody that knows how to work with us. When we're in there sparring, we're working on the technical side of our game. You hit a guy with a good shot, you back off. I mean, there's always going to be that person in the gym that's going to try to follow up and try to get you out of there. And it's important to be exposed to those circumstances, those kinds of situations, so that you can learn to navigate through that. But you don't want that for your everyday sparring because you're not working on anything. That's fighting. Um, and then finally, somebody that's going to show up on sparring day. And anybody who's been around this game long enough knows that that's not always a given. Now, if you do have good sparring, this is going to be like, the, like reviewing the game film. After your sparring session, you should sit down and mentally replay the film. What worked? What didn't work? What led up to it that made me execute that particular technique? What was I seeing? How can I improve that? Or, what did I get caught with? What led up to that? What did I see and what was my technique on that that caused me to get exposed? How do I improve that? If you don't have access to good sparring, you could be maybe in a remote area. You don't have a heavy bag or a gym, let alone a trainer 
or a sparring partner, this is going to be the closest thing we have to add any sort of realism or applicability to what you're doing in the gym. It's going to be the only thing that adds some sort of pressure to try to bring any sort of exposed areas, exposed holes in your game to light. It, we might be um, completely unaware that throwing a certain technique leaves us exposed to a certain counter technique unless we're constantly reviewing and going over these different scenarios within our head. Okay, what if we're inexperienced and we're not real confident that we understand what kind of looks we should be getting from, uh, from our opponent? Well, if you're sparring, that helps because you're gonna get, you're gonna start to understand how is this person coming at me? How are they defending? How are they moving? We can start to commit that to our, our, our memory. If you don't have that though, put on some film. Focus on one of the fighters. Uh, how are they moving prior to punching you? And how are those punches coming? How are they moving in response to punches? How are they slipping? How are they blocking? What kind of game are they getting? What kind of different looks are they getting? And then try to translate in that into the projection of your opponent in your mind's eye. Look, if you want to get to the next level of boxing, you're going to have to spar. This is not going to be a replacement for sparring, but if you don't have sparring, or for some reason sparring is not part of your program, this is going to be the closest thing we have to it. Now, when we're in the gym, we need to make sure that we're doing this, like I said, on all non-sparring uh, training. I mean, when you're sparring, you should be looking 100% at your opponent. But if you're not sparring, if you're shadow boxing, don't worry about what you look like in the mirror. Don't worry about what the other people in the gym think you look like. Think instead, put 100% of your focus on that imaginary person in front of you. If I'm throwing a jab, what are they doing? If I catch a jab, what are they doing? Again, we're going through those scenarios. And for the heavy bag, we need to start changing our thinking around the heavy bag. Stop thinking about what I'm going to do to that bag and start thinking about what that bag, which represents my opponent, can do back to me. When I jab that bag, if he comes over top of the counter right, where am I? Am I protected? If I jab that bag and that right hand is lazy and he throws a counter left hook, am I protected there? Continue to go over these scenarios. Make your bag work about movement, about defense, about positioning, and then start bringing in the punches. I actually have a video on this where I go in a little more detail. I'll link to that below. But that bag needs to represent more than just something for you to punch. It needs to represent an opponent that's moving and hitting you back. Okay, last thing I'll say about this. Look, I know it's a pain in the ass. I mean, if you're on the fifth round of a hard heavy bag session, and you already sparred, you already jumped rope, you already shadow boxed, you already drilled, maybe did the mitts. You're just trying to get through this bag physically. The last thing you want to do is have to expend these significant mental resources to have a picture of an opponent on there going through that mental work. Okay, but that's how it should be. I mean, there should be a barrier of entry to having a strong game in boxing. If it was easy, everybody would have a strong mental game. And everybody doesn't have a strong mental game. So it comes down to you relying on the fact that your opponent isn't doing that. You did, having that conversation with yourself about how bad you want it. And if you can get that strong mental game down, it's going it's to more than make up for any physical deficiencies that you may have.